Welcome to our first broadcast service during the coronavirus outbreak. May God bless you as much as uh, you join in from home uh, with others today, I hope, and as we seek to worship God as we are able to. The service is uh, some scripture, a Bible reading, a hymn or two that you can join in with, and a short talk. So that's our sort of framework and uh, it's an experiment, but may God bless you and us as we experiment with this technology. Let's start with a scripture. God is our strength and refuge, an ever-present help in time of trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. We pray. Lord Jesus, who endured the adulation of the crowd, the hatred of the wicked, the humiliation of the cross, and the glorious resurrection from the dead, meet with us today as we worship, that we may be nourished by your word, encouraged by your life, and strengthened by your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a hymn, and I'm sure you'll remember the words for The King of Love My Shepherd Is. The King of love my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransom soul he leadeth, and where the verdant pastures grow with food celestial feedeth. Perverse and foolish oft I strayed, and yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. In death's dark veil I fear no ill, with thee, dear Lord, beside me, and thy rod and staff my comfort still, thy cross before to guide me. Thou spreadst a table in my sight, thy unction grace bestoweth, and oh, what transport of delight from thy pure chalice floweth. And so through all the length of days, Thy goodness faileth never. Good Shepherd, may I sing thy praise within thy house forever. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on the cross and to be raised to new life. He died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good, that we might go at last to heaven saved by his precious blood. So then let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In thy mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with thee, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we come to our scripture readings, and we have three today. The first is from Colossians chapter 3. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive 
as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And our second reading is from John chapter 10. Very truly, said Jesus, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he had brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate, and whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And our third reading, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I notice to say that uh, uh, in this time of being confined to our homes uh, for many of us, it's possible to join in a virtual community. Uh, we've uh, some of us have set up uh, some apps on our computers and uh, the other evening a few of us gathered around the app known as uh, Microsoft team and uh, we had split screen and we we're able to join in from several different places to talk and pray together uh, that's available and if you are interested in doing something like that uh, in your village uh, or across the benefits then uh, do email David Chattel or myself and uh, we can give you a few hints of what we're doing. Uh, recording this uh, as uh, we enter the first Sunday without Sunday services for the first time since 1208. And so uh, it's strange for all of us. But let's make the best of uh, what we can do, worshipping together, perhaps in this way or in other ways. And uh, there'll be some emails coming out to tell you more in the next day or so. Now a prayer, and then I'm going to speak. Father, we ask now that as I speak and as we listen, your Holy Spirit will bless us wherever we are as we hear your word. For we want you to meet with us in this situation and that we may see your glory revealed in all the struggles and crises. For Christ's sake. Amen. Well, today is Mothering Sunday, where we would normally have the children and baskets of flowers to pass among the ladies of the congregation. Thank you, God, for mothers, for we have all have or had them, uh, or we wouldn't be here. And we would be thinking of Mother Church as well. But I want to take you in a different direction today, because in the current crisis, uh, sometimes it's important to follow a different line. And I want to take you to the 23rd Psalm. It's probably one of the most well-known uh, pieces of scripture 
uh, in the world. And uh, if you were like me, you had to learn it by heart at school at the age of eight or nine. Now, with today's uh, coronavirus pandemic sweeping across the uh, world, uh, last Sunday I turned to the Psalms and spoke from Psalm 46. Now, the interesting thing about the Psalms are that they are written out of the experience of the human beings uh, of their lives in good times and in bad times. Some are written with anger at injustice, and rightly so. Some are written to invoke curses on the wicked and calling down God's judgment, and there's still a place for that uh, when faced with deepest evil. And uh, some are written out of depression and desolation, and others are written out of hearts bursting with praise. And uh, you'll find every human emotion expressed in these ancient hymns and poems from which so many of our hymns have found their roots. So this is the shepherd psalm written by David the shepherd boy who became king, the giant slayer, who was Israel's champion. First, we're struck by the statement of who the psalmist knows. The Lord is my shepherd. We know his identity, Yahweh, King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the good shepherd. And of course, Jesus picks this up in John chapter 10, saying, I am the good shepherd. It's something personal. The Lord is my shepherd. God is not an impersonal influence, but a living person who walked this earth in Jesus. Can I ask, is he your shepherd today? There are lots of people who follow God from afar. But scripture tells us that we can know him personally. Some of you watching may not be regular worshippers, but is God calling you to follow him today? To open your heart and life to him and to discover his presence and power in your life? Because he loves you. That's why he came to this world. Second, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He provides for us our daily bread, spiritual and physical, although some may be finding it difficult to get hold of some provisions at the moment in this situation. There's none that uh, need to go without because there's more than enough to go round. It's just that we need to share what we have with others and be less selfish. We are God's agents in this world to do something about the inequalities uh, that there, there are that exist.